Okay, Rich, we're live. <coughs> it's Tuesday, July 14th. Uh, it is the virtual Zoom meeting. Um, tonight, our first presentation will be a special permit with site plan approval application. Uh, for 808 Main Street, McDonald's. This is just an initial public hearing, so there'll be no discussion. This is just them presenting the project, um, uh, uh, just an initial presentation. Eric, are you set to go? Someone has to read the hearing notice. Oh, sorry. I have it. Town Millis Office of the Planning Board, notice of public hearing. In accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Section 11, the Planning Board will hold a remote public hearing on Tuesday, July 14, 2020, at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom platform. The agenda with login information will be posted on the Planning Board's website 48 hours prior to the public hearing. McDonald's Real Estate Company, 110 North Carpenter Street, Chicago, Illinois, is requesting a special permit under Section 13, Special Permit Conditions, Paragraph C, Site Plan Review of the Zoning Bylaw of the Town of Millis, and Section 12Q, Section 5, Use Regulations to Raise and Rebuild the Existing McDonald's Restaurant, located at 808 Main Street, Millis, Mass. Assessor's Map 24, Parcel 3. A copy of the application and site plan is on file in the office of the town clerk and on the planning board's web page. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the application should appear at the time and place designated. Richard Nichols, chair. Okay, and uh, for McDonald's would be uh, Eric du Dubre. Correct. Yep, for the record, Eric Dubre with Bowler. Thank you for having me. Eric Wagner, who is an area construction manager uh, with McDonald's on the line as well. Um, so, again, thank you for the, the introduction there. Um, again, we're here proposing a uh, complete grade rebuild of the existing McDonald's at 808 uh, Main Street. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of feedback on Yeah, um, if, if you're not, uh, if everyone could else could uh, mute. Uh, while they're presenting, it would be great. Uh, again, so full raise and rebuild of the, of the existing McDonald's. Um, the Again, we're site plan special permit based on the restaurant with drive-through window. Um, some of the other permits that we're going to be uh, submitting for and are actively going for right now is we're with the Board of Health for an environmental impact review. We've got a hearing scheduled August 11th for that before the zoning board for a variance for wall signage um, and we already received a zoning board finding um, January 2018 for some existing non-conformances uh, to maintaining maintaining some of the existing um, parking setbacks on the rear and in side of the property um, so if I could share my screen if no one has any objections to that I'll just sh show you the existing conditions of the site just based on an aerial here Again, McDonald's is in the center it's fairly commercial there we Again, go. McDonald's in the center it's a fairly commercial area surrounding if everyone's familiar with the site obviously Main Street running running along the bottom here McDonald's under existing conditions we've got two site driveways we've got an, an existing exit one-way circulation around the site about a 4100 square foot building We've got a single lane drive-through with a single place to make your order um, and we'll touch on that making uh, the existing drive-through stacking uh, much better condition under proposed what we have here is just a colored site plan, just essentially what we submitted to you, just add some color just for ease of presentation. Um, again, the entire site is going to be scraped and will be brand new. We're maintaining the, the locations of the existing driveways, um, so the circulation will be very similar. The building location is going to be very similar, so it's going to have a very you know, a, a similar feel to how it is under conditions in, in respect of circulation. Um, but obviously, you'd enter the site, you'd have an opportunity to park along. 
um, or enter the drive through lane. Again, under existing conditions, we have a single order point. What we're proposing, what McDonald's likes to do and has done for by side drive through. What we do is we add a second order point to the a, you know, a long order or, or it starts to so customer would come in, recognize that, and just buy a path of that. And what that does. Eric, can I interrupt for a minute? Yes. Whoever's unmuted, could you please mute? We're getting feedback, please. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, I'm going to try and play through and see what happens. Yeah, I just I, I can't figure out who's, uh, who's creating the feedback. Okay. Got it. So again, under proposed conditions, with the, the order is in, and so what you see what we have is less. We'll have the stacking where we want it, which is in the drive-through lanes at the moment. That's going to be a massive improvement uh, over existing conditions. Actually, as you come through, make your order. We've got the two or uh, a window and then. A Conditions. We also have a third window if your order is Pull forward to that third window. Um, that then deliver your meal there to help the efficiency of the drive through and limit the stacking that happens in your existing Okay. Additional uh, for this site over the existing conditions, we're adding what, what we like to call a recirculation lane. This existing site has no way to go from this side of the site without going to the So we're adding a thin lane to be able to come back around. Um, and that helps prevent, again, people if they didn't get the, the correct order, which doesn't happen often, or they just want to come back to the site for any other reason. But I have to go into Main Street, which is a benefit, obviously. Relative to site signage, we're going to replace the existing directional signage at the driveways. So we'll have entrance signs and exit signs. We'll make sure those are compliant with code. We're supposed to maintain the freestanding sign. Um, today is internally illuminated. We're going to code at the top of that. maintain the existing condition. Um, so any feedback from the board relative to that? Or Beneficial for us to hear that conversation. Yeah. The drainage and utilities. I mean, the existing site centrally drain is very flat, so we anticipate very little earthwork. The treatment train and then through a stormwater quality unit uh, prior to discharge um, to the system of Main Street, which is where the site goes today. Uh, utilities to be gas and electric brought to the building. Um, sewer goes out towards the rear into an easement. Uh, and, and water comes in off of Main Street. Uh, to landscaping. Um, we're proposing about 382 new planting on site, including 11 new uh, trees. Um, those are essentially scattered throughout along the perimeter, uh, shrubs, grasses, uh, all sorts of grasses. So, uh, we're going to give back about 950 square feet of additional green space or pervious area on site. Uh, it's always a nice thing to be able to do when you're you know, renovating it. I mean, where we can. That's generally it uh, for the site plan. Um, actually, one last thing to note is the trash enclosure, fully enclosed, about six foot high, trucks material. All the dumpsters will be located inside and screened appropriately. Um, with some providing even for screening that. So the proposed.
those elevations. Um, these were just submitted, I believe, earlier. Provide this. Eric, can I drop in one more time, please? Um, <clears throat> I think I can you in George Caracas. I can't see you, but I can't uh, tell if you're muted or not. If you could make sure you're muted, please. please. Camille, you might, as the host, be able to mute him. Um, that's what I'm looking right now. I think everyone else is muted. There we go. Great. Let's try that. Beautiful. Go ahead, Eric. Sorry about that. No, it's great. Uh, all right. So we've got the proposed elevations up. I was just saying that I don't believe this was originally submitted in the original submission, but I believe it was just provided today. I'm not sure. Obviously, it doesn't give you much time to review it, but did want to just okay. share this now to give you a chance to look at it. I just muted uh, someone. This is the, the front elevation of the building. Um, I did fail to mention that there's a proposed play no, place the was uh, at this location. Um, so the, the front elevation, essentially, we've got some brick material. This would be in a gray slate color, EFIS material. And then this would be a, uh, it's called a batten. It's an aluminum batten, but it's meant to kind of mimic a wood, a wood look. Um, we do, again, we've got four signs proposed where technically we're allowed one wall sign. We will have a, an application before the ZBA, but this is showing that proposed sign package uh, just for reference. Um, this would, this elevation would face out what we call a non-drive-through side without the drive-through windows. Again, same, similar color scheme. Um, very much more modernized building, clean and sleek. Uh, this would be the drive-through side with the, the several windows that we discussed in the rear of the building that faces out towards the, um, the plaza. Um, I do have, it's not the exact building, but I do have a rendering, which I think will help kind of illustrate some of these materials and colors a little bit better. But again, it's not the exact geometry of this building, but just for reference, I um, thought it'd be appropriate to share this just again, just to give you a feel for, for that building and some of the signage uh, that we're proposing um, on there. Again, brick doesn't show up too well, but a brick material for the base material of the building is aluminum battens made to look like wood um, and an aluminum, uh, again, an aluminum uh, system to shield any mechanicals on the roof. The golden arch logos, and McDonald's, and the play play signage. So that is essentially what we're proposing to do. Um, we do have outstanding comments uh, from Beta. We have not provided a response to those yet. We were hoping to work and get some feedback from the board tonight on a handful of those comments, but I don't know if that sounds like that might not be feasible um, based on what the chairman said earlier. Um, happy to go through those handful of comments if the chairman thinks it's appropriate now. Um, otherwise, I think that concludes our our presentation. Um, so, uh, Camille, on, on this, um, I did want to, since we just got these elevations, I did want to give some feedback um, on those. Um, there's a couple of points that um, in Millis, uh, the signage is really important. Um, I actually uh, I measured the signs that you proposed, and they're very big. Uh, the play place is 2 by 16. Um, the, uh, sorry, it's sorry. Play place is 12 feet long, two feet high. Um, the McDonald's sign is two foot by 16 foot. The McDonald's logo is three foot by four foot. And there's two of them. So not only did you have more signs than anticipated, they're really large. Um, since this is a McDonald's, I don't think people are going to have a hard time figuring out where it is. Um, so I would say that, um, you know, the town of Millis, we'd like to try to keep a village feel, and this looks more like Las Vegas. That's my personal opinion uh, on that. So I, and also uh, the back lit, internal lit signs, we do not allow. So um, that, those are a couple things that you need to 
revisit. Um, the other thing was the design itself. Um, I know we can't necessarily dictate design. Uh, we are trying to keep a, a village feel. And like you said yourself, this is a more modern and slick look. Um, some of the other areas, like the mobile gas station, uh, they uh, adjusted their design to keep it more of a, a, a village feel versus a, you know, a glitzy feel. And that may be something you would consider. Um, so that would just be a couple of comments that I had. I would open it up also to... Uh, 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 people on the board, if they had any comments, and I can't see the screen, so you'd have to. Uh, uh, Camille, can you see the? Uh, you have to. There we go. Hey, does anyone have any comments? If you want to raise your hand, Nicole. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would just like to reiterate what you had said. This is um, the design of this is not in fitting with at all with downtown Millis. Um, I, I know um, McDonald's has specific things that they carry on with their businesses that people recognize with and associate with McDonald's, but this, the, the lines, the coloring, everything is just, is not in fitting with a, a village atmosphere that that Millis and all of the surrounding communities um, in this area carry. So if there was some way to soften some of those lines, make it more Cape Cod style feel, which is what a lot of our buildings are, we would really appreciate that. Okay. Um I agree with you too, Rich and Nicole, and <clears throat> I do know that in many towns, particularly in colonial towns, like up in Maine and what have you, a lot of the McDonald's are in old style Cape Cod buildings. Um, I think there's one up in um, Kennebunkport, that particular area. Uh, we had this issue with the um, mobile station, and they said they couldn't do it, yet they did. So I think you guys could do it too. Um, the other thing I don't care for, and I think it's going to be a problem, is that cut through in the front. I think that's going to be more of a detriment. Uh, what there is now is there's a parking lot or, or parking spaces, so if somebody doesn't get their order, they park there. I don't think in all the years that I've lived in town, in all the, I don't think there's a lot of people that drive in and drive out. They park and they walk inside. Um, I think it's more of a problem, particularly if you're going to have a play place. You're going to have cars going through and kids running all over the place. Uh, I have to look at the plans again, but I also noticed that the um, handicap was across the parking lot, if I think. And I think that's unacceptable. If you're going to have a handicap spot, you have to have it by the door, like they have them now. So I think you guys need to go back to the drawing board. So all the other uh, companies that have into town and willing to do all this for us so uh, I think you could probably do it too and we'd appreciate it thank you Melissa you did um, just going back to George's point you guys did do an initial review on that I don't remember if uh, uh, I, I don't have it right off the top of my head if the handicap uh, was an issue um, we didn't comment on the, the spaces being across the, the drive aisle. They do have the, um, the lining on the, for the walkway. Um, we did comment on providing wheelchair ramp details and other features, um, curb cut openings, detectable warning strips, things like that, including those on the plans. Um, but we can, we could take another look and, and, uh, discuss that with Bowler, um, as they address the comments, if you like. Go ahead, Nicole. Um, Mr. Chair, yes, the, the those parking spaces, the handicapped parking spaces are not only across the parking lot, they're close, they're right at the front of the entrance. So if somebody, especially if someone is heading westbound 
on 109 and they're looking to turn into the parking lot. They may be, they're going to be looking as much into the parking lot and up 109 to make sure there's nobody coming. And as they turn in, the first thing that they're hit, that they're coming across is a walkway for handicapped parking space. And I think that's just a recipe for disaster. Okay, well, that, uh, I think that's a good point. I think they'll be taking a peek at that. Um, Melissa, did you have any uh, top three items that you jumped out at your report since you did go through it? Um, sure, we were just looking for um, some clarification on the number of parking spaces provided and, and just some background um, what's typical for a McDonald's or if they had any numbers to, to provide for the spaces that they have on the plans. They are reducing the number of spaces from what's existing at the existing um, building or on the existing site, but it's still 23 more than what's required. You know, they do have the play place. I'm not sure how that factors into their parking space count. Um, so that's one thing. We were just looking for some justification on the number, how they picked that number of parking spaces for this, this particular building. Um, we commented on the, so they, they're improving the stormwater conditions as far as they're putting in deep sump catch basins and they have a proprietary separator unit before it discharges into the town's drainage system. So they're making a connection to the town's drainage system. Um, so that will treat the quality of the water coming from the site. Um, we did make a comment as far as whether or not they could provide some sort of infiltration. Um, they are reducing the stormwater just because they are reducing the impervious area on the site. There is a reduction in impervious area. They have some more landscaping. Um, but they're in the, you know, zone two area. So we always look for ways to infiltrate rooftop runoff. Um, I'd say from a technical standpoint, they are meeting the stormwater standards because it's a redevelopment. So it's maximum extent practicable, but it's up to the board as far as, you know, what you would consider maximum extent practicable and whether there should be an infiltration component on the site. Um, the soils are a little, there's fill in the top layer and then there's some glacial soils underneath, um, so it would be limited as what the, as to what they could do, but they might be able to put something in the that first first few feet, um, if the board wanted to see more maximum extent for infiltration. Um, I think those were probably the two things that I wanted to point out as far as that might. The board might want to comment on or provide feedback. Well, like they said, though, the, the, the site right now is just about fully covered. So, um, you know, it, it, what they're taking out and putting back other than the building is significantly bigger. Um, you know, it actually looks like it'll be an improvement with the landscaping that they're going to put in versus what we have now. Um, and um, I, th I would I think I would ask them to look into if you could throw an infiltrator in. Um, uh, if it's not a big deal, then maybe something you may want to take a peek at. And then the other thing was the signs, but it sounds like they're going to the zoning board and you gave them feedback on that already. So that was our other comment. All right, um, does, does anyone else have any comments? Um, yeah, I want to reiterate, I'm, I'm not real happy with that front drive through. I think, as Nicole mentioned, um, if you're going to do, you, you cannot put handicapped across a parking lot. That doesn't make any sense. Um, any handicapped space should be next to a door so that there's there's an actual entrance. If somebody was going across in a wheelchair and some somebody pulled in there and lost their brakes, you've got a dead person. And who's, who's going to be responsible for it? I just also do not like that cross through across the front. If you're going to make a handicapped area, that's where you should put it, if anything else. But if 
another thing what would happen there too and i can see it the kids at night are going to be doing circles around that building until somebody calls the police and that's just not not acceptable i'm sorry i would definitely vote against that particular one so i think it just they need to go back to the drawing board and come up with some a little bit better ideas particularly for the handicapped area that's very important okay great thank you Bo, do you raised your hand did you want to say something no, all set? Okay. All right, well, um, thank you for your presentation. Um, and uh, if you can get back to us uh, for our uh, next meeting. Um, Camille, do we need to uh, continue this to the next hearing? Yes, you'll have to continue to Tuesday, August okay. 11th. And whatever time you'd like you can it's a public hearing there needs to be a motion to continue right motion to okay so i make a motion to continue this to the next uh meeting which is august 11th at 7 30 august uh, 11th second all right motions made and seconded all in favor uh you have to do it by person. roll call yep aye 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 all right and that's unanimous all right thank you and that will be thank at 7 30 p.m on august 11th and it will most likely be via zoom again okay our next um, item is uh we i we reached out as a board to uh work on some of our zoning bylaws and subdivision rules and regulations uh, beta was nice enough to uh, give us a memo uh, which went over some of these items nicole did you have a chance to um go through those and give us any feedback I did <clears throat> excuse me I did um, I started pulling up old um, decisions that I had saved and yes which I'm a big enough geek that I've saved these things online <laughs> um, the problem that I came across was that in our decisions and our weight in the decision it will state whether or not we've granted the waiver it doesn't state what the alternative is so um i know there were some of the items that are we always get requests for waivers that we don't want to eliminate such as the sidewalks on both sides of the street in subdivisions the installation of fire alarm um, police call boxes the tree planting we didn't want to get rid of those because we grant those waivers developers pay in lieu of they pay into the fire department fund the tree fund so those we didn't want to get rid of but the other ones such as um the minimum coverage over mainline drain pipes on the decisions that i have we own i only had yes we granted the waiver so those are things we're going to need to um in my opinion, defer to Melissa as to what would the minimum requirements be, or pro which would be more appropriate. Um, Melissa, do you want to speak to, uh, there's a couple, the one is the bottom of the drainage, uh, the, the drainage, retainage basins that we always change. Yeah, um, the 2% minimum slope right senate sorry melissa um the two percent minimum slope um i mean that one just based on what mass dep looks for in stormwater standards and wanting to infiltrate as much as possible um is just something that you don't necessarily need to do or encourage to do um things that we'll do is is maybe put you know a little drainage channel in the bottom or sometimes we'll put um, some sort of method for draining the basin in the O M manual um, is, is how we more typically like to see it addressed um, so, and but I think that that one I wouldn't necessarily change the slope or anything like that I think it would be something that isn't necessarily necessary that particular section um, the requiring the minimum feet of cover on the drain line pipes and the sewer mains um, I could I could give you a recommendation 
um, on what those should be. The other thing is if it's, if it's below, like for drain pipes, if it's less than four and a half feet, we might put something in there that it needs to be a higher class concrete pipe. Um, or per manufacturer's instructions that it can take a certain, you know, load for reduced cover. Um, and I think, I think we just worked that into the decision maybe for Emerson under either a condition or maybe Dan changed his note. I can't remember which. It was under the street. Been. It was under the street. They did that. And then everywhere else he, he had less cover. Um, yeah, but he could use the regular pipe. Right. But I mean, I think he put either, he put that in a note or we put it in the condition. I can't remember which, if it was less than four and a half feet, then it bumped it up a class, mm -hmm. the class rating of the, the pipe. Um, so we can pull that out for what we did in, in Emerson and I can come up with a recommendation for the, for the sewer. Then there were some other ones. Oh, go ahead. There were some other ones that you had said of, um, and that would be within several boards of developing um, cohesiveness between the boards, meaning Board of Health, um, Select Board, um, on trying to get uh, a similar uh, standard for all of them, so we can try to streamline. Right. It's, it's basically the stormwater, all the stormwater stuff, and I'm not sure. Um, where the town's at as far as, so one of the components of the MS4 permit is updating regulations this year um, to incorporate a couple things that are required by the permit. You're supposed to require that an inch of runoff is retained on site. There's a, there's a couple other things in there um, that'll need to be done under the Board of Selectmen as the, you know, stormwater authority assigned um, kind of lives there. So I'm not sure, and I guess I could reach out to, to maybe Jim, because he has Kleinfelder, um, works for the town, of, for the MS4 permit. I don't know if they're working on updating regulations, but there's things that when, when we work with the town to update their regulations for the MS4 permit, we'll look at some bigger, some other items and kind of do it all at the same time. And some of those things are things like using updated rainfall data this actually came up at the Board of Selectmen last, uh, meeting last night with Emerson Place um, as a concern of, you know, should we be using more up-to-date rainfall intensity? We get all these crazy intense rainstorms lately. Um, something that's a condition that we always recommend across all the boards is to have soils evaluated, you know, when systems are put in during construction. Um, we talked a little bit about the basement floor elevation of buildings and whether that, you know, should be talked about as a, as a regulation. Now, with um, that, though, with that, Melissa, we discussed, I mean, and uh, Dana brought that up. That's kind of tricky because you can have a, um, you could have a development that has different soil conditions within the development or you, or even the neighborhood. And so one area you could have sand, the other area you could have glacial till, which doesn't drain. Um, so what would, like Dan said, in a couple of months of the year, you'd have a water issue uh, that you could handle by pumping. Um, to go across the board and say that, you know, you need to be above the, you know, the mean water uh, line isn't necessarily, um, you know, uh, would be to the homeowner, it would not be fair. Um, on that because it's a it, it's a spot condition so that's something that it, it's a good idea uh it might be something we'd have to think about really hard if we wanted to try to do that mm -hmm. right um what else do we have you know there, there's a lot of things and i'm not sure where the town wants to go with their stormwater regulations. I think it's something that's come up quite a few times. And, you know, in the last week I've had, or last couple of weeks, I've had four meetings on stormwater for um, Emerson Place. You know, I had the Board of Health yesterday with the Board of Selectmen and the, the 
Board of Health, all kind of talking about the same issues um, and the same conditions. Everybody has the same conditions in their approvals as well, um, which is, I mean, it makes for the plans definitely getting everybody's input, you know, in the stormwater, but it's definitely a lot of, um, you know, kind of run the, run the developers through the gauntlet there. Um, so whether, I mean, some of these things I think could be incorporated into the subdivision regs, like using the, the, the updated rainfall intensity data would be something that I think would be prudent, you know, when you get subdivisions coming into town, um, you got another, you know, a couple probably in the queue. Um, I think that's Camille, something that does. Oh, oh, sorry, you know, just to cut, uh, cut you off for one second. Uh, Camille, are you there? Yes. Yep, I'm here. Oh, can you hear, yep, can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can yeah. hear you now. So on the on the subdivision, um, we could just um, on those we don't have to go before town meeting for that. Right, we could the, just go ahead. The and subdivision, be able to approve it. right? The subdivision rules and regs. We would have to just advertise and hold a public hearing, I believe, and then you can just um, make the changes. But zoning bylaw changes go through town meeting approval in addition to public hearings. That's correct, right, Melissa? The subdivision rules and regs do not require town meeting approval. Right, yeah. right, that, correct. Yeah, well, there are regulations, we, not a bylaw. I, I think what we should do on that is that we now, we, you know, Melissa gave us a whole list of items. I think we could uh, work on paring that down to, um, you know, the ones that we want to address. And um, we can present that. Um, for, you know, review and uh, voting. Mr. Chair? Ms. Riley? Um, with regard to the zoning bylaws, there were three that all had to do with parking. Um, one being nine by 21 foot parking spaces, the number of parking spaces per unit and number of loading spaces per unit and the 15-foot landscape setback between a parking area and street right-of-way. Um, would you like me to uh, talk to Melissa at her, whatever it works for her schedule, um, get some information on that, draft it up, and send it out to the board? Um, Melissa's actually got back to us on that, um, and um, I think on the on the uh, on the parking spaces um and correct me if i'm wrong Melissa. Uh, our ours are, are um one of the things with parking uh if especially if it's a business if they screw up their parking uh they're going to basically shoot themselves in the foot so um you know that the size of it like at dunkin donuts where you're it's a bit tight and like george with your truck it's hard to get in there because it's you know that would give people pause to uh, go in there, but that's that's up to them. For parking spots, that doesn't necessarily you know bother me um, because if they cheat themselves, then you know that's what they're going to do is cheat themselves. Um, that's my thought on it, but I'm willing to listen to some feedback from you. Does anyone else have any thoughts on that? Melissa, what is the common size? Uh, I'll have to look that up. I remember nine by eighteen, but I, I was, that's, yeah. I was going to say 18, but. Alan, it's the um, number of uh, spaces per unit. Is that for business or residential? Like that would be. Office. Well, there, this would be subdivision, so uh, it would be for. Um, that's well, that's a, yeah, that's not subdivision. Um, 
I think we've, I think people have asked for waivers on both on commercial and residential, but this is not related to subdivision right. parking, parking spaces. I think one of the issues with number of uh, parking spaces per unit on residential is, you know, we're not, there's no public transportation here. We're an automobile town. So I think, uh, you know, you don't have parking at the units, you're forcing people to the streets. Yeah, the only, that, you know, typically in the subdivisions, they, I mean, our subdivisions have been, you know, single family houses, so that's usually not an issue. Right, but are, this is under zoning, this isn't under the subdivisions. Correct. Okay, well, um, I think what we'll end up doing, uh, like I said, I, I think the path forward on this is that I think we should uh, to address down to uh, the number that we are comfortable in dealing with. Um, we'll bring them up next meeting um, and we can do it as a public hearing um, and then we could um, vote on them in September. So we could we could go around and pass those around uh, within the uh, planning board and get that ready. Excuse me, just one sec. You're thinking about having a public hearing at the next meeting? Uh, be, no, it would be. Right. I think we'd have to have one more. Great. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So with that, we're going to move on to, um, let's see, we have a uh, uh, signature. Um, so Camille sent out a thing on that. And do you want to, uh, let's see, do you have that, Nicole? I don't know who's making that noise. Oh, so we have the signatory. Um, hold on, I have to find it. I have it. Um, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 41, Section 41, um, we for to sign and approve for payroll. Um, so we need to, a vote needs to be taken for those two individuals. And I believe the chair is usually one of them. And in the past, Jim McKay was the other um, authorized signator because he was in town hall. So Camille's notice had requested that again that be rich and that the second Tory the second signatory be me since I am in town all day um, but if there is so that will need to we'll need to have a discussion and a vote on each one right so uh, I'd be authorized to sign all the bills uh, on behalf of the planning board <clears throat> and then no that's different this is for that we have to take a vote as well, but that's a separate vote. Right, and that's the that's the one I was talking about right now. So, as the as the chairman, I would be uh, authorized to pay the bills, sign for the bills for the planning board. So I make a motion that. Um, well, actually, I can't make the motion for myself. Does someone want to make a motion? Mr. Chair. Yes, Ryan. I make a motion that the planning board does approve and authorize Chairman Richard Nichols to be the signatory for all bills. Second. Second. All right, all in favor? Second it. Oh, I can't second it. George seconded it. I second it. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Do it one by one, please. Aye. 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 Voter? Aye. Okay. And uh, I. All right. So it's unanimous. Oh, and Josh. Sorry. We didn't see Josh, you're, you're not. You're not visible. I know. All right. 
All right, so we're because in. Josh doesn't want us to know that he's off somewhere in some tropical island. Absolutely, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the second one, Nicole. I can't uh, make that motion. Yeah, so I, I, make, a motion that, I make a motion that we approve. Uh, you can't Nicole. make that motion either if you're one Why? of the six boys. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll make the motion. I, I make the motion that... <clears throat> Nicole O'Reilly be the, be the the second signatory <clears throat> for bill paying for the planning board. Second. For payroll. I'm sorry. That was That's for payroll. actually oh, sorry. Yeah, this is for this second motion would be for both Rich and I to be the two signatories to to sign and approve payroll. Okay. So change that to uh, signatory for payroll, which would be Nicole O'Reilly. Second. All right, motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, all, it was unanimous. Great, thank you. All right, um, let's see, projects update. So um, <clears throat> we, um, because Jim is uh, no longer with us, um, in, in not, in not in the bigger and better things, um, uh, gone ahead and put together a uh, presentation of uh, projects that are ongoing and uh, just wanted to update the people in town on projects that have started and the status. Uh, um, so uh, Barbary Homes on Bridge Street, uh, that was the one that they had started it and uh, it died. Um, so they're still in regret. COVID-19 has slowed the process, um, and they're in the process of uh, drafting a six-month extension of the purchase and sale and closing in early 2021, um, but they're still committed to the project. So that basically, uh, because of the sale and the COVID, uh, they're going to push that off a little bit until the um, beginning of next year. Toll Brothers with uh, Orchard Street, um, final repairs have been made to the power station and the Middlesex pump station. Uh, the abandoned manholes have been filled in and the plantings around this, the station have been placed on hold until the fall to give them a better chance to survive. That would be on Middlesex Street. Um, on Orchard Street, the gas company is installing 10 services on Orchard. Uh, scheduled to be begin uh, the beginning of this week, depending on the gas connections. Um, I don't know if that actually started or not. Um, and that will just be binder. So the at least the road will be smooth once they put the binder down. The final course will be done in the spring of 2021. So at least the road will be as smooth as it is from, uh, let's say, the beginning of, uh, from in front of Glen Ellen to Holliston. The road's much smoother now, um, so it'll be a better road to drive on. Um, 1105 to 1115 Main Street, uh, the gas station will have a honeydew donuts in it. Uh, the final paving was done on the 6th, and they're waiting for Eversource to turn the power on. <clears throat> um, there's a couple of um, uh, outreach meetings that are scheduled uh, coming up, just for uh, public information if they're interested in finding out about them. 617, which is 1073 Main Street. Um, they are going to have a community outreach meeting on July 16th. Um, one of the things with uh, 1073, um, the owner, so that was passed a while ago, and you know the work was anticipated to have started sooner. Uh, they're that took a little bit to work through. Um, so they're still planning on going ahead with that. Uh, GTE LLC, 1480 Main Street. Um, that's the one next to, um, that's the one down by um, Uncle Ned's Fish Farm. They're having a community outreach meeting on the 23rd. Uh, I'll have to have uh, Camille confirm that. Ex um, excuse me, then, Rich, Rich, on that yeah. one, excuse me, they have changed the date to July 30th at 6 p.m. Okay. 
July, yeah, July 30th at 6 so p.m. So that was, that was right. It was the 30th at 6. Um, and then uh, at VESA Wellness, um, that one, they have a uh, hold a community outreach, outreach meeting. Um, I think that was the um, call it building. Um, and uh, so they're going to have a meeting also. Um, call it solar, which was the solar panels they're going to put in call it. Um, nothing new was reported this week. Um, and then um, 1725, uh, sorry, 725 Main Street Inn and Hope store. Uh, Inn and Hope has uh, announced that they're actually closing the curtain outlet store. Um, and they're shutting down all of their properties, so that one is going to be uh, um, closing down. So that may be coming before us. Uh, and also the DPW uh, building, the Millis Conservation Committee has approved the proposed construction plans, and that project will go out to bid at the end of July. So um, I think that was about it for now. Um, for new projects. All right. Um, okay, meeting minutes. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Excuse me. Um, if I could just ask uh, Mr. Weiss, where were the, um, the notifications regarding the two cannabis outreach meetings, where have those been how have those been publicized to i know they have to send out the butters but these are um the community outreach do, uh bob do you know how and where these are being publicized for the community uh, uh yes i do and uh the milford daily news will be newspaper that they're going to be using uh for 617 uh they'll be on our 617 is also went up on our website, the town website today. It's going up on and on the Facebook, town's Facebook. Okay, today as great. Well. And uh, you're right, you're correct. Uh, they, the GT changed to uh, the 30th. Um, so they will be, I believe they're going to be uh, sending out new notices to uh, abutters and uh, will put and, and will advertise accordingly. Thank you, Bob. Welcome. All right. Um, thank you, Nicole. I make a motion that we approve the minutes remote from June 9th, 2020. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, that passed unanimously. Um, Okay, and we have um, a meeting scheduled for August 11th. We should probably set the September yes. uh, date. That would be great. If you, yes, if you could do that, that would be great. Okay. How is uh, September 8th is right after Labor Day or the 15th? September 8th or the um, 15th? So the 8th is right after Labor Day, you said? Yes. Uh, yes, it could be the 8th or the 15th. Um, I don't know. Why don't we do the 15th? Does that yeah. sound good for everybody? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's fine. Okay, September 15th. Okay, great. Thank you. And maybe we can have them in person. Oh, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> Although, can I say that on a town meeting? Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. No comment. Chair. <laughs> yes. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I uh, second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry. That was a little I have a comment to make. Enthusiastic. I'm sorry. Is that inappropriate for meetings either? <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you're on those deserted, those nice tropical right. islands, huh? 
between my apathy and our violations of the Establishment Clause, we're going to be in real trouble, Nicole. <laughs> Before you adjourn, I would like to make an input. Okay, go ahead. You'll have to, reopen, as as you'll have to reopen the meeting, Rich. You just adjourned. Oh. Um, you can just make a motion to reopen. All right, I make a motion to reopen the meeting. Hi. I say hi. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Volunteer. Yeah. Uh, Melissa, you can go if you'd like. Okay, George. I would like to make an input. Okay, go ahead. George, you're all set to go. Thank you. I I sent some I, I, communications to, to the board. And in it, I asked regarding the two trees that were cut and removed from Scenic Road, Bullet Lane, the board uh, stated that that was approved by a request from Eversource. I checked all your records, and the only record I could find were that there was a request, but the tree warden specifically stated the trees could not be cut and removed. They can only be trimmed. So I asked the tree warden does he know who cut the trees? And I tried five attempts to various approaches, and I have not received a response. So I would like to know who authorized. Do they know who cut those two trees? With that, George, um, that didn't really have anything to do with the planning board. So the person that you were put in touch with was the uh, tree warden. That would be the person that would have knowledge of that. We have no knowledge of what happened there. So um, I can't, we really can't help you on that specific thing. I know you brought it up before and your point has been well taken, but there's nothing that this board can do about it. Yes, there is something the board could do. They could remove the statement that the trees were able to be cut. We never authorized them to be cut. And, and and we're not going to get into an argument. Your point has been made. Okay. We're done. I make a motion to adjourn. Uh, second, I have a second appointment. Okay. Could we make a break, please? The, the planning board repealed the law showing that they do exercise a control over uh, zoning statements of the front yard, rear yard, side yard. Presently, every resident in the town of Millers is non-conforming. Okay, we've been through this. Um, George, we brought this up multiple times in multiple meetings in a town hall. Um, I appreciate your exuberance on this. We've already talked about this before. Um, th I'm going to make a motion for the meeting to be adjourned. Yeah, Mr. Chair, just a minute. It's not in our jurisdiction that Mr. George is, Mr. George is asking us that's not under our jurisdiction, the planning board. He's brought this up before, Boda. And he's brought up, it's the side yard setbacks and it's uh, people having sheds in their front yard. Brought up before, and it's been brought up to the uh, building commissioner. Um, everything that we do within town is within our body. So the point has been made multiple times, and we're not going to do anything about it. So that's. Okay. Let, let me uh, complete this second point. I now will take it to the court. 
Now, on my third point that I raised was the death trap on Bullet Lane. Do you have authority to consider that? Um, I have to refresh my memory. That's where it gets really tight on Bullet Lane. Uh, my question to you was, what was your, I, I understand it was tight there. I don't remember what the concern was, George. The concern is that pedestrians on a scenic road, the entire family can be wiped out by a vehicle. And it's caused by the building commissioner having allowed an ornamental entrance stone wall to be placed on town property. That I am not aware of, and if the building commissioner allowed that to happen, then I'm sure it was within, uh, within rights. Um, I can't really comment on that because I'm not too familiar with it, so. Well, well he violated his his authority, who, who would take care of this issue? Who would prevent a family from being wiped out? Uh, that I really can't answer, George, on that. Uh, the police department, uh, but that's, I, I can't get into theories, so. Um. Okay, I, as a professional licensed registered engineer, are informing you that there is a safety issue and I am authorized by the state to make this engineering presentation to the municipality. So you have been forewarned of a death trap. I'm taking this to the courts. I spoke with my lawyers this morning. You're going to, so I'm done. I'm done with you people. Okay. Well, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, thank you very much and enjoy. Welcome to the club, Alan. Thank you. <laughs> Good times. All right. Nice so I, I will see you.